So hopefully you watched my last video on my phase 2 of my diet. And in that video, and in my last blog post, I did mention to you that I'm going to be talking about the kind of diet. So if you are a little bit confused as to what I'm talking about, go back to that video, which is here, and check it out. Basically, I will be talking to you today about this book. This is The Kind Diet by Alicia Silverstone, star of Clueless, absolutely gorgeous woman. And this is a fantastic book that you guys need to know about. I did toy with the idea of possibly reading this all to you, but I thought that I would rather you... I read enough for you to kind of want to read the rest. Like, I'm not trying to tease you, but I do feel like you should go out and purchase this book. And if you can't purchase this book, it's fine, because I'm going to give you just enough information. But, um, obviously, if you purchase the book, there's other really important things in here that I can't read to you. And there's recipes. So it's The Kind Diet, a simple guide to feeling great, losing weight and saving the planet. So the book starts off where, you know, we have the foreword and etc. She talks about what's a kind about dieting. And actually it's here that she has a definition on, on front of every single chapter. And you'll see it says diet, and it's a, it's a definition, noun, a way of living or thinking, a day's journey. What I really like about that is she's restoring the true meaning of diet and that a, lot, a diet always comes with the sort of connotations of you know deprivation etc and kind of you know it's like a grueling thing that everyone every woman and man is going through these days and um, she talks about diet in terms of a way of living and you know obviously she's talking about veganism so she talks about she actually goes through very uh, her life story in terms of veganism and it's very, very similar to mine, whereby we kind of, all the way through our lives, ate meat but didn't want to eat meat. And then, like, sort of was vegetarian one day, wasn't one day. And then, you know, I think she was, I'm not sure, 21. She just suddenly thought, that's it. I'm going to be a vegan. That's shocking, because it's around the same time as I've decided to be a vegan. Except I have this wonderful book, and she was strong and did it herself. But... She obviously, you know, talks about loving animals, etc. She talks about how wonderful the diet is, which we're going to go through in a minute. The first thing she talks about in chapter two is nasty food number one, which is meat. And I know a lot of you guys will be eating meat, a lot of you are meat eaters, meat lovers. Um, the, no way is in this book trying to stop you from eating meat. Of course it is, but it's not going to condemn you from eating meat. And um, by me reading this doesn't mean that I think any less of you if you eat meat, because let's face it, meat's delicious. But um, I don't eat it anymore, and I'm going to tell you the reason why. So it starts off with a quote from Hippocrates. Let food be thy medicine, and thy medicine be thy food. And it's a, a very powerful quote. Honestly, Hippocrates knew his shit. So, I'm going to read you the first two paragraphs anyway, to kind of get you into the feel of it. She says, Things have changed a lot since Hippocrates uttered the beautiful statement, Let food be thy medicine, and thy medicine be thy food. In fact, it's almost as if he never said it at all. These days, we tend to think of being healthy as just getting through the day, making a living, or not dropping dead. We consider health the absence of disease. When symptoms do arise, we throw chemicals at them, hoping they will go away rather than looking for underlying cause. This is modern medicine. Because we look at the body as a bunch of bits and pieces, we have all sorts of different doctors. The ear, the nose, the throat guy, the skin guy, the heart guy. And when things go wrong, we have doctors who concentrate on the disease itself. The oncologist, the cancer guy. Modern science is constantly focusing its microscope, seeing tinier and tinier bits and pieces, trying to figure out the puzzle of disease. Not health, disease. So, obviously, she's starting off talking to you about health and how important that is. And um, the reason why not eating meat, mainly, is to do with your health. She says, meat is nasty to your body. Meat is bad for your ticker, which means your heart. Um, heart disease is the number one killer in the, of women in the United States. Number one. Not breast cancer, not mascara poisoning. 
Um, we don't know how much it is in the UK, but I expect it's relatively the same because, you know, of the diet that we all eat. He says, and meat eating is a major contributor. Meat contains a lot of saturated fat. Saturated fat elevates your blood cholesterol and that causes plaque to clog your arteries. Clog arteries lead to high blood pressure or even worse, a stroke or a nice juicy heart attack. It's one of the few facts about meat eating that the meat industry has not been able to conceal. According to the American Heart Association, high cholesterol foods also raise blood cholesterol. Eggs contain 250 milligrams of cholesterol, and 64% of eggs' calories come from fat. Chicken contains as much cholesterol as beef, and trout is right behind that. No meat is truly low-fat food, because saturated fat is marbled throughout the muscle, and the cholesterol is found in the cell membranes of the meat itself, trimming the excess fat of your steak does, doesn't do much good. It seems that only a plant-based diet protects the heart. Dr. William Castelli, director of Fram Framingham Heart Study, says a low-fat plant-based diet would lower an individual's risk of heart attack by 85%. So, not only is it bad for your heart, but she says meat contributes to cancer. A 2007 study of more than 35,000 women published in the British Journal of Cancer found that women who ate the most meat were more likely to develop breast cancer than those who consumed the least. She goes on to say, perhaps this is the reason. Researchers at the University of California at San Diego have isolated a sugar molecule, NEU5GC, that shows up in many cancerous human tumours. But the human body doesn't produce NEU5GC, so where could it be coming from? You guessed it, red meat. Not only does NEU5GC seem to build tumours, our human bodies produce antibodies against NEU5GC, which causes inflammation, helping the tumour to grow even more. So again, you know, that's, you know that should be a concern. Um, maybe it's toxins, she says. Dioxin is the most toxic chemical known to science. It is recognised as a human carcinogen. And then she talks about how um, we cook meat um, is also part of the cancer puzzle. When either red or white meat hits a grill, they create a cancer-causing compound called heterocyclic amines. For your FYI, grilled chicken has more than 17 times the number of these compounds than grilled steak. So, she goes on to say meat contributes to osteoporosis. Um, meat is hard to digest. Other meat-eating issues, such as it exacerbates gout, contributes to rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis and be a major factor of um, in the formation of kidney stones. Which is very interesting, actually, because my dad used to eat a lot of meat. Well, I say used to, he still does. He had to have a heart bypass because he was so well, unhealthy. And he often got gout and kidney stones. Shocking. Actually, not very shocking. And this is another thing. This is one of the first reasons why I stopped eating meat in about week three. When I read that meat is full of antibiotics. And this is a well-known fact, especially when you eat non-organic meat. Um, when you eat organic meat, you're a bit safer from the whole antibiotics thing. Because animals raised in confined, dirty, stressful environments have a tendency to get sick, they are given antibiotics to, as a routine preventative measure. According to the Union of Concerned Scientists, 70% of the anti antibiotics sold in the United States go to livestock, including farm-raised fish. Which is really weird, because I thought, well, surely fish is exempt, but no, fish is not exempt at all. In fact, farm salmon has more antibiotics administered by weight than any other from form of livestock and um, actually what's really funny is I found out that farmed salmon is being fed pink food colouring to make them more pink because wild salmon has because of the crustaceans that they eat they become pink like naturally farmed salmon is fed pink colour okay so um so the antibiotics are then passed on to you because you're eating up on the food chain listen to this have you ever seen the inside of a slaughterhouse? Suffice it to say, they're not exactly the cleanest place on earth. When animals are eviscerated, it's not unusual for their bowels to be punctured. Workers kill up to 330 animals an hour, leaving all sorts of intestinal bacteria splatter on the meat and skin. In 1998, an amendment to the Agricultural Appropriations Bill was proposed to give the USDA the power to find meat packing plants for unsanitary conditions. 
The House of Appropriations Committee voted it down 25 to 19. Why would they do that? Turns out that the 25 nays received six times more money from the meat and poultry industry than the 19 yays. The USDA report published in 2000 estimated that a staggering 89% of US ground beef into patties contain traces of deadly E. coli, which can kill. So, you know, she has more information about bacteria, about the antibiotics, so she goes on to say, Cattles, pigs and chickens are routinely pumped full of hormones to promote muscle mass, and these hormones are passed directly onto you. Eggs are chock full of hormonal goodies as well, as are farmed fish. And this is something that I don't really know whether it's true or not. Um, I don't really know where she gets this from. But um, have you ever noticed that if, if you've ever gone from being um, a meat eater to a vegetarian and now onto vegan, that you become a lot calmer? And I didn't think this before I read this. And it said, she says, when an animal is led to slaughter, the adrenaline and stress hormones causing through her veins get passed onto the dinner plate. Might this cause excess anxiety and aggression in us? Are we eating fear and anger? Although there's very little hard science on this, many people report becoming much calmer and more peaceful when they give up meat. And I truly believe it. And, um, you know, some say it's the testosterone that's in meat that causes, you know, the aggression. Hence why you find that men are more aggressive or, or the fact that vegetarians and vegans tend to be a little bit more passive for some reason. And, um... I do feel like in the past two weeks I have had less mood swings and I feel a lot calmer. Just so you knew. Then she also talks about the idea that maybe we're not supposed to eat meat because of the way we we're formed and um, she talks about our teeth, our intestines. Then she goes on about you know human evol evolution etc. And, you know, this stuff is groundbreaking, you need to read it. Then she talks about how meat is not to, to the planet. Um, I won't go through that, but uh, you can totally look it up. Um, she talks about, you know, like, the gasoline, you know, the, the environment. Basically stuff that um, not too many of you probably will be that interested in, but you guys, but those who are interested in the environment and caring for the earth that we live in need to, to go look that up. And then she talks about, you know, it's nice to animals. Here is a quote, quote by George Bernard Shaw. Animals are my friends and I don't eat my friends. Um, yes, I love animals. I always loved animals and I just can't believe I ate so much meat. <laughs> so she talks about, you know, um, the cruelty of it. Stuff that is heartbreaking to read. And I'm not going to read it to you here because I don't want to upset anyone. But she does have some hard facts here. So afterwards she talks about you know how to stop eating meat so she gives you a solution as a, as opposed to just throwing you in the deep end what's most interesting here is she's got a case study here of um kenneth williams and robert cheek i think that's how you pronounce it and this is a vegan bodybuilder like isn't that shocking to you so like men shouldn't be scared of becoming vegan now she goes on to talk about dairy i'm not going to go too much into it but i'll read you a few ext extracts Dairy is one of the most difficult foods to discuss with people for two big reasons. First, we have all been hypnotised by the National Dairy Council, which has been pushing milk since 1915. It was presented itself as a protective parent looking out for the country's health by encouraging us all to have three servings of milk on milk products per day. Well, the National Dairy Council is just a big, rich, organised group that lobbies Congress to subsidise them, funds research to support their claims and launches incredibly expensive advertising campaigns. Remember the milk moustache campaign? So cute, right? Well, 190 million cute little dollars were spent on it, convincing us that three servings a day were a virtual guarantee of good health. And who exactly pays for those 76,000 glasses of milk you drink over a lifetime? And who pockets the money? Farmers have the right to push their products, but I encourage you to re-examine your beliefs about milk and dairy products. Are you afraid of not drinking milk? Do you see milk as a hedge against osteoporosis, a way to build strong teeth? lose weight, then try to reconcile these beliefs with the fact that the Chinese throughout their long and complicated history have never included milk or cheese in their diet. It's only in the very recent past that dairy has been introduced as a daily food and with it has come a rapid rise in health problems like obesity and breast cancer. And how about Japan? Ever seen a glass of milk at a Japanese restaurant? The idea that human beings need milk in order to be strong or to function as a culture is simply not true. 
Um, she also goes on about other chemicals in milk and how it's bad for the babies. This is really interesting. Our bodies are not meant to drink.